Hello, this is Real World Audio, and today I'm following up on an old request. <laughs> By now, it has become an old request on whether AVCs and TVCs, so auto, auto former volume controls or transformer volume controls, are they capable of driving solid state amplifiers or are they good only for vacuum tubes? Because you predominantly see. Uh, me using uh, tube amplifiers uh, and um, it has been now pretty obvious that these work miracles with uh, tube amps but uh, are there any good for solid state amplifiers and I have to tell you that it's been only one solid state amp that I have tried with them and that was the Michael YPA1 and uh, so that's Michael is a power amp, it's a solid state amp and uh, which operates in class A and uh, and with with the Michael E I heard the Michael E sound the best with the Prometheus Audio's uh, flagship uh, uh, transformer and uh, and this made the something uh, from the Michael E that I thought solid state is incapable of doing, uh, namely low level detail and low level resolution. So if you have just a normal preamp with a resistor based volume control, uh, then you will never hear low level resolution from it. And what is it that I'm calling low-level resolution? Uh, I have probably told in my videos a couple of times, but if you are new to the channel, you don't know it yet, that one of my favorite music listening uh, method is to listen to music around, let's say, wake up in the middle of night between 2 and 4 a.m. and turn it on and listen at whisper quiet. And the advantage for that is that at that time, all of the neighbors are asleep. There's no traffic outside, so there's no noise from the cars. There's no noise from the wind. Here in Hawaii, there's always wind and it creates for a, a lot of background noise, like a white noise that brings up the noise floor. But during the night, there's a perfect still. There's not even the slightest breeze. And of course, the neighbors are not using their electronic gadgets and gizmos, no cell phones being used, no pads, no, no computers, and no, uh, in no big industry, heavy industry, uh, polluting the line AC, and you don't need to use your air conditioner, so there's no lights in your room, everything is super quiet, and I can hear the clock on the wall ticking and during daytime I cannot hear the clock ticking and at 2 a.m. I can hear each tick as if it was like someone hitting my eardrum with a hammer and under those circumstances you will be able to truly appreciate the low level resolution and capacity of your system and if you have a regular preamplifier, you will be doomed to play music at a relatively loud volume just to enjoy it. But when you have your TVC, and I'm talking about the micro E, about solid state technology, you set I set the volume to an almost whisper level, and that's what I start listening to and it uh, just turns into the most amazing listening experiences that, that, that I can get from reproduced sound and I highly recommend this kind of listening to everyone at late night when there's no uh, noise floor coming from the outer environment and you just crank it low and if your system allows it you will have a much better listening experience than trying to crank your system 
loud during daytime when there is high background noise which won't allow you to enjoy the quiet soft bit and and the auto former technology aces with a well-built solid state amplifier and i'm pretty sure that the michael e is not the only one that uh, can uh, reproduce this feat there might be other solid state amplifiers as well but let's now look at one consideration or i would say two considerations that will define for you how suitable this volume control method is for you and uh, it will depend actually not on the type of your amplifier whether it's solid state or vacuum tube but it will depend on two factors and factor number one is input impedance so if your amplifier has high input impedance let's say 100k or more so both of my two amps have uh, higher than 100k so i think that is 200k input impedance and this baby here is 100k input impedance and both of them work superbly well with the auto former volume control if you have low input impedance uh, oh let's just rewind i think the michael e also has a 100k input impedance which is nowadays a little unusual for a solid state amplifier but you can still find plenty of solid state amps with that input impedance just look up the specs and if it shows less than that actually what it means is that that manufacturer cheated you from a gain stage and uh, which would amplify the current from the source and they want you to have an extra gain stage at your source to pump that current for your amp and uh, of course uh, amplifier manufacturers will give you all bogus uh, um, marketing nonsense to support their claims why they are dropping your input impedance but uh, one true factor is that they <laughs> want to use one less gain stage and make their system uh, more affordable to produce by that wow so one thing is that if you have high enough input impedance it means that your source doesn't need to have a high current drive or it doesn't need to have a very low output impedance and that's the other factor that depends not on your amp but on your source so if your source has a low output impedance for example if you look at the Hagerman violin phono stage it has a low enough impedance that it can drive a volume control transformer happily and you do not need a buffer stage a buffer preamp or an active preamp to drive it because do not forget an auto form a transformer volume control auto former volume control is not a full preamp it is just a volume control it is very unfortunate that they are called as preamps because they are not preamps they are volume control devices and they compete not against a preamplifier but they compete against a resistor based or other based volume control mechanism so if your power amplifier has low output impedance then it is very much recommended to have a source that puts out a low output impedance source and then even if your amp has a 50k input impedance it will be happy with it with a 10k input impedance I would say uh, the phono stage by itself is not enough. You need a, a preamp that or a buffer stage that has a high current drive of an output impedance in the order of 100 ohms or less. And then your volume control will be happy to drive your 
low input impedance uh, transistor amplifier. There is uh, one more caveat for amps solid state or non-solid state is that um, it's the uh, input sensitivity of your amplifier and uh, if your uh, amp has high input sensitivity so my ampex has very high input sensitivity so I uh, it can have a full output from less than half a watt signal I think it's about 0.3 uh, sorry not what volt 0.3 volt will give me a, a full power output from these guys but if I look at my single-ended amp from that I need uh, I think a 1.6 volt signal to generate full power output so when you have that case that you need about 2 volts or higher from your power amp then it means that when you are listening to want to really rock out and listen full blast you have to turn the volume control to the highest setting and when it's at the highest setting it has a low current drive and in that case you will find that uh, many of the autoformer or transformer based volume controls will be insufficient at peak power levels at peak listening levels and that's because when you listen to it at the loudest then you have as much current drive for your amplifier as your source puts out and nothing more when you click the volume down you go down with the volume then you have better and better current drive better and better output impedance and then you will not have problem which means that you will have uh, excellent uh, uh, body and bass control for your uh, sound but as you go to higher volumes it will the sound will thin out because your source has inadequate current drive for your amplifier and and then uh, in, in that case you will need a buffer stage to compensate for that but when we are talking about low volumes then it's providing you that extra uh, ultra low uh, output impedance for your source that's what it will reflect into your power amp and then any AVC or TVC will cut the grease and work perfectly so if you always have to keep your volume super down for your system then uh, uh, TVC or AVC will be a much better choice regardless of what kind of amplifier you are using if you constantly have to keep your volume high then it will be inadequate for you you will also need an active preamplifier for it and i have to add you one more thing with both uh, solid state and transistor amps is that the uh, electricity that you are getting in your house also accounts a lot for whether you need an active buffer stage or not or just your uh, avc will be enough and what kind of avc will be enough for tvc is that i have used this big prometheus audio and my uh, avc in several uh, places where i have moved which had drastically different uh, power in the uh, house or place so one of them was in a, a, a new built construction home but in a neighborhood which is like a super densely populated uh, neighborhood and the uh, and the house had a very small circuit breaker and the room was totally overloaded and my stereo shared everything basically with all the living room appliances and a bunch of the kitchen appliances were run from the same circuit and in that case this Prometheus Audio big uh, TVC was performing at loud volumes much much better than my AVC and why is that? 
that's because I, be, I will show that in the next video because this guy deserves uh, that. But in the other scenario, like right now in my new home, where I have dedicated uh, power lines for my stereo and not just one de de dedicated power line, uh, but as you see here in the background, those those one, two, three, four, I have four dedicated lines just for the stereo here in the living room. And each of those lines are uh, basically 20 amp connectors with 25 amp wires running inside uh, the wall. So I have like tremendous headroom and with this setting, this my autoformer royally trashes the Prometheus audio. It's like in a, like two or three leagues higher. However, in that my other scenario where I had just basically one single uh, circuit breaker feeding everything in my living room and half of my kitchen, and I had all, all sorts of junk running from the same uh, source, then this was much better when the volume was set to highest level. And, uh, and actually, I can tell you why. It's because this one houses a massive giant transformer. So my unit, the, the auto firmers inside, I think they are about a 10 VA core. So that's like a 10 watt uh, core. They are these small uh, auto formers. And here, let me just open it up for you. The, the flagship Prometheus audio, it has a massive, a hyper giant. This core is about 300 VA. Yes, it dwarfs the uh, output transformer on my Ampex amp and it dwarfs the output transformers on my single and the triode amp. And uh, if I would put a 150 VA core transformer next to it, it, it would be dwarfed. It's a baby transformer. And uh, the result of that is that uh, this huge core allows to have a very low DCR coil. So the internal resistance of the coil is super duper low. And uh, that will allow you uh, a use for uh, for systems it will benefit you when your power line sucks and where the uh, current output and the output impedance of your source is not sufficient to drive your uh, power amplifier so i would say that if you have a, a solid state amp that has uh, a 50k input impedance or maybe like a 10k input impedance then you have to go with an autoformer that has a hyper massive core in it and if your power amp has a low i mean a high input impedance let's say like 100k or 200k and you have good enough power lines in your home then the small autoformers will be or transformers will be perfect for you thank you for tuning in please like subscribe bye bye